haven't done it before. I still do it. Amen. When I just get locked into the Holy Spirit. And that is when you get it, when all, all of a sudden the presence of God is contagious. You can get it on your own. There's a certain measure. But biblical impartation is actually, you get it through association. Amen. You get it through association. It means you have the capacity to enjoy a certain measure of grace that has already been saturated in your predecessor. So it's the grace that rests on those senior leadership that you are in relationship with. Amen. I know we churches, I'm not speaking just to this church, but all across America, we, and the globe for that matter, we don't like proximity. We don't like getting to know people. We don't want people to know us because they told us that they know you, they're going to make you comment, which in some instances it does, but not all the time. Sometimes people get a healthy uh, understanding of the, the grace that's on somebody like the anointing of somebody like the ability to navigate the spirit and to articulate the kingdom. I've been close to two men and I never at one time made them come. I put the honor that was upon them that was due them, due to them. So I didn't make a comment because I talked to them all the time. I had a healthy respect. I knew the boundaries. And if you're going to tap into the, the uh, impartation, that's, that is the main way God increases and enlarges a tent corporately through impartation. Vocabulary, language, uh, conversation, those are the seed forms mm -hmm. of receiving impartation. Mm -hmm. Somebody had told me before, they said, well, they went to a church some years ago and they sat in the church and, and the man of God uh, actually left his mantle for them to pick up. And, you know, somebody had said that before. And I've talked to other men and women of God because I was under the same impression that you can be in a service and catch one. Like you catch a cold. Just, you know, you can just be in the right service that uh, it'll, 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 you can connect with it. You can get it. You can grab a hold to it. But that's not true. It's not biblically true. You have to go to the scriptures and find out what is the president's description. The scriptures is the standard that we use. Not what somebody put in a book. Not what somebody preached. I try to stick as, as much as I can true to the scriptures. Amen? And we find out that in order for that to be a true legitimate transfer of the grace that's on someone's life, it's through relationship. That's why the enemy always fights you. That's why he always want to silence the voice of your leader. Because see, we ain't picked it up yet. We ain't figured it out that it's not necessarily has anything to do with what I, who I am. It's what I need. And we carry stuff for you. Months. Not understanding that there's a breach in our spirit. That we can't receive the activation, the impartation. We can't receive the upgrade, the renewal. As we want, as it should. Because God searches the heart. He knows the heart. It's a heart issue. It, see, if it's in your head, that's just, you got the knowledge. But there's a whole other level of knowledge. The epinosis, when your heart connects to it. It's, got, it's a heart thing. And we don't connect heart. We connect head to head. We don't connect heart to heart. And that's the that's that Grecian mentality. The Hebraic mentality is a whole other level, a whole other meaning. I thank God I got uh, baptized in that thinking because it has helped me the last decade. I, I've, I've been studying the Hebraic and Grecian mentality and, and the schools of thoughts, and I really found out. I'm like, man, we really got it wrong in the West. We think we can go to the back door. We think we can get pick up a... Uh, take his, get his books out, get it, uh, him or her. If, we can, if I can grab him, the, the, the goodies at the end, make sure they got the uh, Bible in the car and their books in the car. And, and those things, I'm not belittling that. But if it's not from the heart, that is just a form of godliness that denies the power thereof. And the reward is as such service. Amen? Amen? God wants to go deeper. And it's going to have to be a church that goes deeper. And there is a level of impartation that you get when you're sitting in the service. There is an impartation. 
I understand that. And then, you know, and but there's a greater level of impartation that comes to service. To service. And it doesn't have anything to do with if I got his telephone number, if I got her telephone number. If I can sit down and eat them and discuss things over pancakes or stuff, discuss them over lasagna. Because that those those things can become fickle items too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just claim symbols. You get what I'm saying? But you can tell if you've got an authentic impartation because the voice that you hear is clear. If you agitate it, if it ticks you off, if it rubs you the wrong way, then you know you don't have the impartation. But if you can esteem it and put value on what's being declared publicly, then you know without a shadow of a doubt that you are hooked. That you are hooked. In most churches, this church, we probably about three percent. We, we're not, we're not there yet. As a house, we're not there yet because we value, we value more what's coming out of the pulpit. That's a whole nother level. That's why I don't, I, I'm loose. I'm very loose when it's when I, when I. You hear me say, son? I'm very loose with that. I mean, not loose. Not loose that, to that point. Be bad. <laughs> I'm very conscious, anxious about it. So I won't just throw it out like confetti. I used to stress it. There you go. Not loose. I'm not everybody's son. And you shouldn't feel like a bastard because you're not mine, son. There's an honor in being a chef, a sheep, and me being a pastor. There's an honor there too. In fact, you can't go to Father and without understanding my role as a pastoral. Oh, they want to skip the ranks. No. There's nothing wrong with that. Start from square one. Ground zero. That's my pastor. Some of us come in to the door. Once, That's my daddy. No, no, no. no. We're going to talk about that with the courts. We're going to straighten that out a little bit. Amen. But I, I, I personally, I, I value impartation. I put I put my life on the line in impartation. I, there's ways you can activate it and receive the graces on somebody else's life outside of your immediate sphere. And it comes to honor, you esteeming them, putting value on them, not making them not making them deity or deifying them or, or codifying them. None of that terms. I'm not saying that you go home and, and you start dressing like them and you start, you get what I'm saying? Your house start looking like them and you drive the same car. No, no, no. That's trifling. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. That's carnal stuff. That's good hand stuff. It's going to go up and smoke. I'm talking about a configuration in your heart. I'm talking about when you can face face to face. I'm talking about when you see eye to eye. When the core values that's in his life. It's in your life. That's when you know you tapped into impartation. Okay, we need to like get over there. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Good news says, for well, I want very much to see you in order to share a spiritual blessing with you to make you strong. And that's what that word means. It established in, 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 in the King James. It means to be, be stable. It means to place you firmly. Remember a while back in one go, I told you it's, it's steroids. God wants to give us steroids. He wants to make us strong. He wants to make us buff. He wants to give us some endurance and tenacity. It comes through impartation. You can't, you're not a lone ranger. You can't do it by yourself. I can't. I don't. I haven't. I won't. Do it on my own. You got to have somebody else in your life. You got to, man. You got to. You got to. I'm telling you, if you want to grow, I'm talking about leaps and bounds. I'm talking about when a plowman overtakes the reaper. I'm, I'm talking about you will light years. Amen? Amen. And I, I, I know 
uh, in this house, we haven't really tapped into that. We haven't moved in that fashion as of yet. We haven't recognized that grace, the apostolic grace and impartation, in which I'm going to talk about that further when it comes up to my time on the prophetic training. But I've got some other notes I want to leak in there. I want to help us out. I really do. I want to help us to, to become healthy. I really want us to become healthy. I really do, man. This stuff is not, this is not, uh, what is that? It's not romper room. It's not, it's not playtime. It's not recess. You get what I'm saying? This is classroom, homework. You gotta, I mean, this is, you, you got you to be engaged. You know, you, you, when you start making, understanding the cause and purpose that God has for you, you say, well, I'm not called to the ministry. You know, well, you are. You are called to a ministry, probably not to the ministry, but you're called to a ministry. All of us are called to some point, some form of service. That's all, if you look it up, that's what it means. A deacon is the same word as ministry. It means a servant, service. God has a need to use you to put you in his service, to employ you to be about his business. And that's all. I, I, that's what I attempt to do most of the time, to get you out of the uh, unemployment line in the spirit and give you an assignment, give you a job description. So you say, this is what you've been called to do. And this is what God has given you to do. And sometimes we take it so lackadaisical because when you really grip a, grab a hold of and you get a vision of what God has called you to be, man, you will hold on to it like Caleb. You become a spiritual bulldog. That's what the name means. You will hold on to it. You wouldn't let it go. It's imperative. This church is going to enlarge its tent. It's not just going to come through uh, me sitting up here spotting all re revelatory terms and stuff, trying to give you some insight to keep you intrigued. Now, they don't have anything to do with all that stuff, man. They got something to do with you becoming intimate with the knowledge that's been released to you. So that we can so we can do a bow face, look at one another, and bear witness with what the word is being spoken concerning all of us. That's the ultimate goal. And if there's anything in you contrary to that, you have to deal with that. You have to address those issues. I'm not, because I'm not going to cast my pearls on swine. Mm -hmm. I know everybody in there. I know who the ones here who just want to go for the ride. I know the ones in here who say, well, I'm, a, I'm only going to ride so far. I know it. But it's okay. 